Okay, so let's talk about the Ethernet transmitter uh, algorithm. So if an Ethernet uh, transmitter has a, a frame that it wants to send, and if the Ethernet is currently idle, it will immediately transmit it. There's no delay, uh, and it will send that one frame. And because the frame has an upper size of 1500 bytes, um, it will only be able to hold uh, the Ethernet busy for a short period of time, uh, given you know, we're talking about uh, 10 megabits per second. Uh, this will be quite a, a short period of time. So if on the other hand, an Ethernet uh, transmitter wishes to send a frame, but the Ethernet is currently busy because somebody else is already sending a frame, it will wait for the line to go idle and then immediately start to transmit. Uh, and for this reason, it's called a, a, a one persistent protocol because with probability one, it will attempt to send uh, a frame as soon as a busy line goes idle. But because there's no centralized control, um, it's possible for uh, multiple transmitters to try sending at the same time. And if that happens, then we'll say that we say that their transmissions collide on the network, and that will cause neither of the frames to be able to be received by uh, any device because it's still going to be jumbled up uh, together. So now we need to have a mechanism to deal uh, with this situation. So because Ethernet does have the collision detection, we can tell that it's happening. Um, and as soon as the adapter uh, realizes that its frame is colliding with another one, it first sends a 32-bit jamming sequence to make sure that uh, the other uh, transmitter will also realize that and uh, other devices as well. So in the very least, it will send us the 64-bit preamble followed by the 32-bit jamming sequence. So 96 bits of data will be sent uh, in the case of uh, a collision being detected on Ethernet, but possibly more if the, you know, if the two transmitters are not perfectly synchronized. Uh, and that can also be because of the propagation delay characteristics. Um, if it's a, a longer Ethernet, uh, that, that may not be realized for a little while later, so it might be more than that, but it's going to be at least 96 bits of, uh, of time on the line occupied. Um, so yeah, so if they're really close to each other, that's when you can get this 96-bit uh, runt frame sent. If they're further apart, then you'll end up with more bits being sent uh, before the collision. Um, of course, in the, <laughs> the worst case scenario is if they are at the opposite extremes. And you, again, if you look back to the original ethernet where you could have potentially uh, a couple of kilometers, um, you could end up with as many as you know, uh, uh, several hundred bits uh, being sent. And because this, you know, the, the worst case scenario was 512 bits, there's actually a requirement that every Ethernet frame has to be at least that long so that collisions can always be detected. So an Ethernet frame must be at least 64 bytes long to guarantee that the collision detection algorithm uh, is able to work. Um, and this is just simply because of the, uh, the, the distance and the propagation uh, delays uh, that this entails for the uh, the signal to travel down that length of wire. Okay, so let's have a look at how this might happen uh, in reality then. So node A begins transmitting some frame uh, at some point in time. Um, we'll talk about D as being the, um, uh, the latency. So the first bit uh, that A sent will now arrive at B um, at a time that's equal to the time that it was first sent plus that latency. So it will be the sum of T and D. Um, but in between T and T plus D, um, B begins starting its own frame. So as soon as uh, A's frame starts arriving at B, B will realize that there is a collision. Um, but A won't realize until a little bit later because its collision has to reach from A across to B and then for B to start transmitting. And so this can be uh, up to T plus two times D. Uh, and so um, A has to keep transmitting uh, for, sorry, and B is gonna be sending the 32-bit jamming uh, sequence. And so A effectively has to do uh, the same as we're sending the jamming sequence from its side once it realizes that this is going on. 
so that jamming sequence will continue um, from A um, after B's jamming sequence has, has concluded because B realized first that the, um, uh, the collision has occurred. Uh, so if we look at that pictorially, so A sends to B um, at time T, uh, and then at T plus D, that frame arrives at B, um, but B has already started to uh, begin sending a frame, and so uh, we get a collision, and that collision uh, is detected at roughly T plus D, um, well, it is detected at T plus D because it's when B first uh, realizes that the uh, the transmission from A is coming in, even though B has already started to uh, to try and send a frame. So it will send the jam uh, jamming signal, and then eventually that will come back at another latency of D, so T plus two D, back to A. So A will realize at that point uh, that there is a collision has occurred. Uh, so, and again, if we want to understand the 512 bits so on a two and a half kilometer long so 2500 meter long uh, ethernet uh, with four repeaters uh, they basically worked out that the round trip delay the worst round trip delay uh, could be 51.2 microseconds so at 10 bits uh, 10 megabits per second uh, that's 512 bits um, or you could look at it a different way and say actually that we want to limit the latency of ethernet to not more than 51.2 microseconds um, and that, that then means, as a result of that, that we can't make an Ethernet longer than about uh, 2,500 metres uh, in total length. Now, here comes the, um, one of the other interesting parts. So normally, uh, an Ethernet adapter will just send a frame immediately that the line becomes idle. But in the case of a collision, we know that there are two Ethernet adapters who both want to transmit, and a collision will happen again uh, if we don't uh, do something about it. So one of the things that we do is that each time that they try to transmit and have a collision, we double the time waiting before. And the camera has gone flat. Uh, this will take a brief moment. Okay, so um, the, each Ethernet adapter will wait a short random amount of time to begin with, uh, and then each time it has another collision when it tries to send, it will wait double that time. Uh, so this is an exponential back off uh, that together with that random seed helps to uh, avoid uh, repeated collisions going on, and it works and achieves this in a beautifully distributed manner, right? Again, reflecting the Aloha origins of um, Ethernet where it wasn't possible uh, to have a centrally coordinated uh, time slicing. Uh, they've implemented this really lovely uh, feature. So uh, it makes Ethernet simple and yet remain adequately efficient uh, even when multiple devices are trying to transmit at the same time. So each adapter first waits either um, zero or 51.2 microseconds, and it choose at random whether to do that. So in theory, um, half the time, uh, both of the, um, uh, the adapters will actually choose a different time to each other, which will allow the, um, uh, the transmission of one or the other to proceed. So that's 50% of the time, it's resolved automatically. Um, if that fails, so in the other 50% of the time, it will either wait um, 0, 1, 2, or 3 times 51.2 microseconds, again, randomly chosen, uh, before trying again. Uh, so now it has four choices uh, up to uh, a larger value. So again, the probability of both adapters still choosing the same value on the second try is now one in four. Uh, at the third collision, uh, there are now eight time slots possible. So the, again, the probability drops off uh, by half at each point. So after a few intervals, it's almost certain 
uh, that the uh, the transmission will have been able to uh, uh, to continue. Okay, and we'll continue that in the next video.